Hey everybody, this is Andrew from TS for Tech, and today's video is a bit of a follow-up video to one that I did a couple weeks back, uh, which was regarding Visible Wireless and setting up a Visible Wireless account uh, for an iPhone that I had. And while I was using that, one of the other things that I um, wanted to explore a little bit is how I could set up that as an LTE backup to my main uh, home network service or my main internet connection, which is a Xfinity, uh, you know, cable modem setup. And often, you know, with working from home nowadays and all of that sort of thing, I've had some issues with if Xfinity and I'm <laughs> pretty sure anybody that has had Comcast or Xfinity, uh, you know, especially in a large metropolitan area, such as like the greater Chicagoland area has had issues from time to time. You know, they have, uh, they have quite a few outages, right? You know, basically, which really sucks when you need to be using Teams or Zoom or WebEx and things like that. So, you know, I've often been switching between, you know, using the hotspot on my phone and, and all of that to kind of solve for that if there is a network outage or, or something like that. But I was just more curious than not just to see if I could set up a more uh, robust kind of uh, failover situation and, you know, leveraging the visible SIM in a Mophie 4500 LTE router and seeing whether or not that would help me kind of resolve this. Now, I'm not really going to talk too much about the failover configuration and all of that because that's a whole separate, uh, that's a whole separate thing. Um, but, you know, I'm using a TP-Link R605, which is really, it's a, it's a multi-WAN, uh, advertised more as a VPN router. I'm not using it even. I'm not using it for VPN, but uh, you know, I'm using it to do the failover between the uh, the Netgear cable modem as a WAN input, as well as the as the Mophie. And and I'm not doing load balancing or anything like that. It's really just kind of like a failover. So if Xfinity goes down, it just switches over to the uh, the visible LTE service. And obviously, you know, it's not as fast. Right, my my Netgear speeds are usually about 350 meg megabytes a second uh, down, and maybe 10 up. Now, visible is r generally around 60 to 70 down, and maybe 40 up. So it's a little bit speedier on the uh, the upload length versus the download, but you know it's not it's not as fast. But in a pinch, it, it definitely works. So. What I wanted to do just in this setup, just kind of talk about the experience that I've had using, you know, the Mophie with the LTE with Visible, you know, kind of disregarding the rest of this. For now, I might make another video, but, you know, I just, I have this set up in, in this way. So, and how I'm currently accessing it, you know, for using this, so it's not really kind of in an act, uh, active passive mode, so it's not just sitting there and not being used. I did configure a second Wi-Fi uh, router that's plugged into the basically uh, the Mophie itself, so that I can use that interconnection internet connection whenever I want. So I don't have to kind of fail over or go through with my main wireless router, which is also an Eero. Uh, it's a mesh network. I have six nodes around my house and property. Um, you know, and again, like on a on a daily basis, that's being serviced by Xfinity. In a failover mode, it will it will uh, be serviced by the LTE uh, visible connection. But I do have a separate network in my house, which is using a Eero Pro as a secondary network, and I can just tap into that whenever I want and use the Mophie connection directly. So you know, whatever. Like I have a few things. I have a couple iPads that I you know I usually use this service connection for. Or if I'm downloading stuff and I have a I have basically a 1.2 terabyte cap of data of, uh, of usage on the on the Xfinity connection, so if I get towards the end of the month, like this past month, and I was getting close to using up this, I switch a few of my devices that consume a lot of uh, you know a lot of download or, or if we're watching Netflix or we're doing things like that, I'll, I'll switch them over to this. And it actually works pretty well, and then I can avoid going over my cap and being charged over to charges and things like that. So there, there's a bunch of different ways to use this <clears throat> if you're not just using it as a phone, 
right? And you want to try to do this. So long story short, this is how it's kind of set up. Uh, you can ignore the other stuff because it's all kind of just, you know, uh, my main network. And there's obviously a bunch more computers and stuff in here. I just like just put a few just to show um, how I've got it set up for, 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 for reminding myself how this is set up. Now, um, I bought this off of, uh, of eBay, actually. So it's a Mophie 4500. It's their 4G XE LTE V3 version. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different versions. So, I mean, you can go ahead and figure out for yourself if this is something that you want to do. Now, the, the, this this unit actually is a few years old. Um, you know, these are kind of business class type devices. So they do have... Um, uh, you know, it is right. It's not really a consumer-facing device for the most part. They're they're generally used for you know ATM connections or all kinds of things out in the field, <clears throat> maybe IoT related and stuff like that as gateways to send back data. But you know, I, you can pick these up pretty cheaply uh, on eBay if you're looking for a good deal. I got this for around a hundred dollars, I think, and it's worked great. Now, the only thing that I'm not using here or that didn't work so great. Is the actual Wi-Fi built in because it's basically an older, you know, I don't even know what the specs are, but it's like, you know, Wi-Fi B, G, N, right, kind of capable. So I had initially first set it up using the Wi-Fi connection from the Mophie as the secondary thing to access, but I kept getting, it just wouldn't work. It would keep dropping. It would keep going back to my primary network on my iPad and stuff like that. So that's why I just turned it off on the actual Mophie device. I don't, don't even have the antennas connected for that. So the only thing the Mophie has is the, the LTE ultra wideband antennas. And other than that, it's just being used as a router that outputs the internet connection into uh, the TP link, you know, for the failover configuration. Also I have that connected via um, Ethernet jet, uh, Ethernet cable to the alternate uh, Eero, right? So like if you look at this, the secondary Eero is just connected, you know, to the back of the uh, the LAN connection on the on the on the Mophie. So from from that perspective, you know, there's only a few connections to that directly. Um, and in, in this situation, one of them would be to the TP link and one of them would be to the Eero itself. So the Eero is on the 133. Um, and that's just basically connected directly to it. I have this thing set to reboot every night. So that's why you'll see like the seven hour sort of thing, uh, the counting down cause it, it drops the DHCP leases when it reboots. But, um, so that, that kind of changes there. But I've had pretty good success for this because last month, um, you know, I've used about 360, 368 gigs of bandwidth off the Mophie itself. And now this was, you know, in a transition period where I was rebuilding a machine and I had to download a ton of uh, games for my son, um, you know, Epic games, Fortnite, all these things. And I, you know, again, like I said earlier, I was at the, I was at the, <laughs> would pass the the bandwidth uh, you know, the bandwidth cap on my Xfinity connection. So I just connected directly to this thing through the Eero and I just downloaded all the games over the, you know, the visible network and it worked flawlessly. I had no issues. Speed was good. And you can see this month, you know, there's only six, six gigs or so, but I've only really been using my iPad and, and some stuff like that to watch some videos off of Apple TV, TV plus and, um, Netflix and that sort of thing. But overall, I mean, it, it you know works really good. Now, I'm not talk, I'm not really going to talk about the setup of this because there's a bunch of other videos on YouTube on the setup, and you know, I, all I did was go to the, um, you know, go to those videos and watched a couple, and then I, you know, figured out how to set up the internal modem. Um, but it's fairly easy, you know, to set up once you put the the SIM card in. You basically, you know, set up a few things here. Um, you know, the access point name is visible internet. It will, you know, you know, get the information for the SIM ID and the SIM card, uh, phone number and all of that, the carrier ID, this is the Verizon carrier ID, all of that as you do it. And it works fine. Um, so I'm not really going to talk about that too much other than I have had to, 
uh, set the TTL, the time to live, you know, between uh, Linux 265 and Linux 3117 to get the full speed. Um, in a couple cases, when I initially started this out, it seemed like it was being, um, the bandwidth was being throttled down to five megabits or five megabytes a second up and down, which is what happens if you do connect to your phone as a hotspot. So if I, in the previous video, I had um, the iPhone and if you share the connection via hotspot, they throttle it. Um, so in here, it basically, um, if you make the changes to the TTL, then you'll end up not having it throttled through the Mophie. Now, you, you're, you know, your mileage may vary. Uh, I'll show a video here of some of the speed tests from the Eero that it runs kind of on kind of daily basis to, just to check the speeds and it keeps track of that activity and that history. In, in that, I can even see some nights or some days it's, 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 it looks like it's getting throttled. And I think maybe that might be due just to the time of the day and the network congestion and all of that. Um, but then I also set this thing to restart every night. So from a system perspective, you can do a scheduled reboot. So I have it basically at 1 a.m. Every, every day just to reboot the Mophie. And I've seen, and that seems to have cleared up some of the issues where it was being throttled, and then it gets rebooted, and then it's back to the normal speed that I've been seeing. So, again, not really sure what's going on there, but you know, based on the terms of service and everything you know that uh, Visible talks about, you know, they basically say that you know you can be deprioritized on their network, blah blah blah. So, but I haven't really, it hasn't been a huge issue for me uh, for the most part yeah so like i said this is uh you know pretty straightforward once you get once you get get it working now the other thing is you can do check uh, you can use the uh the signal status or the signal strength um to uh you know to basically check from where your location is you know what kind of lte signal you're getting and for me, this generally flux. I've never had five bars because this is in my basement, and I don't really have any ability to put it anywhere on the first floor or second floor of my house, which probably would get five bars of signal, um, you know, to the cell tower. But generally, here I see it. You know, it's it's on the four bars. It might bounce bounce down to the three bars every once in a while, but you know, generally seems like it's a good signal strength, right? It always says good. Um, you know, for me, for now, it's using band four LTE. Um, I don't have this band locked, um, so I am not doing advanced band lock. Uh, the band lock is on, but I don't have it like to be uh, set to a certain band. You know, it it does auto between the ones that are uh, available as part of the um, uh, signal that's coming from the the cell towers, right? So. And you can go ahead and, I mean, if you look into this, again, whole other discussion. Um, it can run speed tests. It can check all the bands. Um, you know, you can, you can check off if you don't want it to use certain bands, um, you know, basically in, uh, in, in this configuration here, right? You can say, oh, I don't want to use band 4 and 2 or 13, depending, right? Um, but these are the ones that are set up, and then it will automatically pick the ones that's best – you know, from, from these LT bands. And generally for me, it keeps picking band four. Um, that's just how it has uh, worked out, you know, from, from what I've noticed when I go in to look at it, but I'm not locking it to say specifically band four. Um, but you know, it's band two, four or 13. Now other versions of, of the Mophie and the newer ones might have some of the more and I don't know what band it is. It might be 60 something where, you know, that's another one I think um, that's on the Verizon network that some people are talking about. I, again, I haven't delved or dived into like all of the intricacies of LTE and the signal strength and all that stuff. All I did is just <laughs> plug this thing in, you know, uh, kind of configured it how everyone else said to configure it. And then it's just been working fine. So, you know, again, it's not a in detail video about that. Uh, you know, it's more of, hey, this is how I've, uh, you know, have been using the the visible sim, not in a phone, and using this kind of to do all of what I was just saying, to provide kind of like a a failover for my network and an an alternative uh, uh, 
Wi-Fi access point on my network to to kind of mitigate some of the, my bandwidth issues and problems de- depending on time of the month and how much crap my kids have downloaded and all the stuff that they're streaming all the time. So I'm just going to show really quick. Uh, I'll just pull that up on the screen. The speed test from the uh, Eero uh, router and just kind of show the history there. And you can just get a quick look at, you know, like I said, sometimes it looks like it's being throttled. Most of the time I'm getting pretty good speeds, which correlate back to the other video that I posted um, the, of the speeds that you, I was typically getting on the phone. So basically all I'm here to say is like the speeds with the Mophie are equivalent to the iPhone in most cases, you know, with a few exceptions where it looks like it was being throttled, you know, either due to prioritization, deprioritization on the network or that sort of thing. Um, I'll link to these devices in the uh, in the video notes here or in the description. Definitely, if you're going to sign up for Visible, please use my referral code. Please use my link. That would help out the channel a lot and be awesome. Uh, if there's other things you want to see or you want me to go deeper into the setup of the network and the failover and all of that, I can maybe do that in a different video. Sometimes I feel like these kind of videos, it's like a screen sharing thing is super boring for people. So I don't want to keep making them if no one cares or nobody's going to watch it. Um, so anyway, questions, or comments, go ahead and post those. This is Andrew from TS for Tech. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.